All right, so let's finish off this so-called thought-provoking problem. Point now we have this relationship between A1 and A2, and this is the equation, or this is the relationship I can use to make the, the problem uh, solvable. So here we are back at our equations of motion that we derived quite a while ago. And notice I had two equations with three unknowns, but now I have this extra little relationship, right? I said that A1 is equal to 4A2. That's my third equation for my, my three unknowns. And now it's possible for me to solve these things. So let's go ahead and do it. I'm going to scroll up, get some nice clean real estate and do it. So let's say, let's do a substitution. And we're going to substitute number 3 into equation number 1. And when we do that, what do we get? I'm thinking I've got m1g times the sine theta plus my tension is equal to m1 times a1. a1 is 4a2, so I'm going to put a 4a2 on there. And what I'm going to do is manipulate this just a little bit because I want to isolate the a2. So let's divide everything by 4m1. This is an m1 right there. So when I divide this term by 4m1, I just get the g over 4 times a sine of theta plus t over 4m1 is equal to a2. And why did I do that with the a2? Well, I've got this other equation with the a2 I can use to eliminate that one. So let's divide this one uh, by a2 and set it equal. So, excuse me, this one by m2. Set it equal. So I divide m2 g sine theta by m2. I get just get the g sine theta. And then I subtract off 4 t over m2. Aha! These two terms have to be equal to each other since they're both equal to a2. Let me bring all my all my tension stuff to the left hand side. Again, I'm going kind of quickly. I'm hoping you're following along. So tension times 1 over 4m1 uh, plus 4 over m2 has to equal, and I'll put all the g's on the other side. I've got g over 4, and I just have a g. So what I get left is 3g over 4 uh, sine of theta. Woo! Now I just have to sign for the or solve for the t, and it looks like I'm more or less done. But before I do that, let's let's see if I can simplify this thing just a little bit. So let's put everything under a common denominator. And that common denominator is going to be four. Uh, it looks like four m one m two. And when I do that, I get m two in the numerator plus above uh, sixteen m one. And I'm dividing by all this, so therefore, I go one step a little further, tension, and looks like this 4 is going to cancel that 4, so it looks like I have 3G, uh, ooh, 3, I forgot about the M1 and M2 here, 3 times M1, M2, G sine of theta, all divided by, and it's going to be this stuff right there, so 16M1 plus m2 and I'm thinking this is my answer let's do a quick unit check real quick units um, looks like I have a mass squared right here so mass squared g is a length over time squared and then I'm dividing by a mass again right so this mass cancels out one of those masses so I'm left with units of mass length over time squared which is a force. Checks out. I like that. So now that we have an answer here, let me go back and try to remember what the question was. So remember we had these two systems right here, and I wanted to know which one is well posed. Another one, which for which system do the do the uh, ropes remain tight and don't go slack and just start slopping all over the place? I want to know which one, this one or this one. So remember we just set up the problem for this scenario right here, and what do we get in that scenario? Let's go back. Here's my tension right here. I'm more interested in whether it's positive, negative, or zero. Masses are always, look at this. I got three, which is positive. Masses are always positive. G is positive. Sine of theta, as long as theta is be between zero and 90 degrees, this is going to be uh, positive. Actually, it has to be between zero and 180 degrees, if I remember correctly. Then this thing's positive. That's cool. 
And then the denominator, I have 16m1 plus m2. That's all positive as well. So I'm thinking uh, tension here is greater than zero if uh, theta is positive. That's important for us. Look what happens when theta is negative. We might remember that's the case, this case. A negative value of theta means we're sloping the other way. And we got the other configuration that a lot of students were in some sense uh, wedded to. So what do we got? So if theta is negative, what do I get? Sine of a negative number is going to be negative. All this other stuff is still positive. So therefore, t is less than 0 if theta is less than 0. Cool. So look at this. When theta is less than 0, tension is going to be negative. Tension is going to be negative over here. Tension is going to be positive over here. But remember, what does a negative tension mean? Let's think about how we set up our free body diagrams again. Our tension meant, positive tension meant uh, the rope was pulling downward and to the right on the free body diagram. And negative tension meaning it was pulling upward and to the left. And think about what this means. If I have a negative tension, that means my rope would be pushing upward on the block. And the ropes down here would be pushing downward on block number two. Since a, you can't push a rope, tension cannot possibly be negative. If it was, the rope just wouldn't work. So what we're going to do, so we get the positive tension when theta is greater than zero. So the system that's well posed is the one I proposed recently. It's the one where we have tensions in the cables holding those two blocks against that constraint. And conversely, for this system right here, this is where the cables go slack. It's this problem that's ill posed. Don't want to do that one. So the correct system, or the system that works as a cable and pulley system, is this one right here. And, 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 the tension would be given by this expression here. Not an easy one, but I think an interesting one. A thought-provoking problem.